Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'll go on uh, to the lasers and ROP. No financial disclosures. So ROP uh, laser is still the gold standard. More than 90, 95% can have a successful outcome. We're looking at better six, 12 or better even after three years or more. Which laser, I think uh, if you are using diode, it's time to switch over to green. Dr. Dogra's group showed this several years ago, maybe serendipitously, but uh, green works much better and has much less myopia as well because the scars are not as deep and you can really have, can, in fact, you can see vascularization going on into the lasered bed. Uh, as Sir has also already mentioned, swaddling or mummification is really important. Use a linen cloth that's not very stretchable and uh, of course, as mentioned, keep the two hands separate. Keep one foot out so that you can put on the pulse oximeter. This is for laser more than screening itself. And uh, if you've really made the baby uh, nicely warm, you should be able to rotate the baby on the back, on the rump of the back, because that's how nicely you can uh, look at it. Dimming lights is optional. I would suggest you start getting used to doing laser with fairly good amount of light in the room, because you can pick up uh, a lot of uh, apnea. Uh, you can even pick up the baby going blue and cyanosis. Oral analgesia along with topical anesthesia is accepted now on both in the NNF and the uh, IROP guidelines. 24% uh, sucrose if available, more easier to get a 10% dextrose. Topical anesthesia is what most of us do all our lasers on with the exception of it's a very large baby or for any other comorbid uh, conditions that you need to do it under general anesthesia. The disadvantage of general anesthesia is only one, of course, other than the fact that you're giving GA, is that you may not be able to go at six o'clock to laser at three o'clock and the tube is, the ET tube almost uh, uh, interferes with that. On all other conditions, you can either rotate the baby or rotate the trolley under topical anesthesia. Positioning the baby, uh, different heights, all of us come with different heights and the table unfortunately doesn't always cater to that. So the most ergonomically best way is to keep one palm length below your umbilicus and a supine baby, the nose should be at that level. With that you get the best view of zone three and uh, you will not miss anything and also it will really help your back because you need to keep it preserved. This is from a chapter uh, I had uh, good fortune of co-authoring with Dr. Capone uh, in terms of the dilator drops, procaracane, all of that has already been mentioned. Don't count the number of spots. Uh, it's like the dosas that you eat when your mother prepares. The, the job has to be done. You cannot leave any avascular retina remaining. So if the, you see the ridge in six clock hours, but there's avascular retina in the other six, be assured that you must laser the avascular retina as well. It's not only about dealing uh, where the, the ridge is. Uh, a small pupil, a tunica vascular salentis is not the only indication for anti-VEGF. You can get good dilatation if you just simply dilate, uh, massage it well, and if you just have to examine the baby once, 360 degrees, it becomes all right. This is a little more easily said than done, that you avoid uh, dense treatment over the long posterior ciliary nerves, but keep that in mind when you're doing it. Uh, and when you depress, especially babies who have a stage three slightly raised, when you undepress, when you sort of release, release that very cautiously and slowly, because if you suddenly depress, that's when you may get a lot of hemorrhage, especially in a vascularly active stage three. Again, as Dr. Dogra's group has shown, you can treat these babies even if they are sick and dependent in the incubator. So don't allow your neonatologist to tell you that uh, I'm delaying screening because the baby is sick, because it's the sickest babies who have the worst disease. And uh, even if sometimes you see a lot of anasarca, which is very low protein in the blood of these babies because they are sick, a lot of them have chemosis, even if you've been very gentle during your lasers. And for this, you need to move around the chemosis, otherwise it can really preclude the view of your laser. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about, give you some case scenarios here. So aggressive ROP, of course, anti-VEGF may be the first line of treatment today, but there are conditions where you should know what is the principle of doing laser for aggressive ROP. And you either have to laser on the flat new vessels or you laser up till the new vessels and wait for the vessels to retract. And this was uh, shown in the photo ROP group. Macular sparing ROP is sometimes you, uh, even though the case may be very bad and you cannot give anti vegf for many reasons, we'll discuss that in the next, uh, this and next talk. You must evaluate and, and when you see these, a uh, lot of uh, prolif, especially in the nasal zone one, but a aggressive ROP in the temporal area, be thorough in your laser, but you can still avoid 
lasering the macula. And wait, uh, and if you've done a good thorough job, more often than not, these blood vessels will eventually vascularize into that part of zone one, which you have left behind. You'll spare a lot of zone one, they'll have much better outcome, obviously lesser myopia as well. So these are, I'm just gonna run these images fast for you to show you that a lot of follow-up later, they do extremely well if you, and you can spare macula in many of these conditions. Now, the, uh, the hybrid ROP, although not a separate uh, nomenclature in the new ICROP3, we see it all the time, where you see fibrovascular proliferation, classical stage three, along with aggressive ROP. Now here you are worried uh, about crunch, especially if you're seeing these babies a little late. If you're seeing at them 39, 40 postmenstrual age, you're scared uh, that if you give anti-VEGF, they will detach, and rightly so. So here you must have laser in your armamentarium. Here's a classical case of very bad hybrid, zone one fibrovascular proliferation, almost in a 39 week. So here you know that anti-VEGF may be dangerous. So here you must know how to do the laser thoroughly again. But uh, the difference between the first and the second laser is sometimes you might have to get into, uh, you may not always be lucky sparing the entire zone one. So you can see that crescent shaped uh, area here that you have spared in the first uh, laser sitting. Uh, you need to go back there and do it. If it is gray, bald, shows capillary non-perfusion. And also within the layers of the fibrovascular proliferation seen nasally, if you're able to laser here as well, look at how angry this plus looks even after your laser has been put in two weeks later. But just one week after that, this is how it will look, just one week after. And that's the advantage of uh, taking care of all the ischemic elements, um, even if they mean in between uh, fibrovascular proliferation proliferative issues, as long as you're sparing. So ideally you want to be at least uh, two disc diameters from the center of the fovea, but if you can't, so be it. Um, now, this is a very, very important topic, uh, laser persisting avascular retina. So here is a zone half uh, with the capillary non-perfusion, as you can see in the FA. Here we've given anti-VEGF, I'm gonna move really fast. Uh, two days after Avastin, three days after Avastin. This is a 2009 case, right? So uh, at that time we were not even sure how to follow up these babies. Let's go quickly to 10 months. This is two months after the uh, anti -vegif. This is 10 months after. Now, most people will now, at this point, declare the baby to be completely normal and let them go into the community, and that's where we are going horribly wrong in India because a lot of these babies are turning up with late recurrences, detachments, and blindness, and you will be medical legally liable. Now, in these cases, 10 months later, as you can see, this is now clearly defined in ICROP as two disc diameters or more of avascular retina, 10 months after injection, uh, where otherwise everything looks normal. And if you go, go back and look at the clinical picture, Picture, you won't even realize, perhaps, that there is avascular retina. And you must mark out this area and laser treat it, otherwise it's not gonna do well. This is, uh, we are in the end of, uh, by the end of today, hopefully the Indian ROP Society would have come up with its guidelines, but this is something that we wrote out. These are six possible reasons that you have to think about when to do laser after anti-VEGF. They are not perfect, they are not guidelines yet, but we promise you before the year ends, we will publish the guidelines as well. So response, recurrence, vascular growth beyond zone one, uh, at least wait for it to go to zone two. Postmenstrual age is important. At least wait till 48 weeks. That's when fovilization should happen. Systemic conditions, please correct anemia. And important reason in India would be loss to follow up. If the mother simply can't keep coming every two weeks, you can't tell her by guideline, I have to see you till 65 weeks, it doesn't work. Now finally, posterior laser, I'm just going to end quickly. Uh, there are three rules for posterior laser. When do you do it? You do it when there is stage three, when it is more elevated than one and a half to two disc diameters of fibrovascular proliferation. You want to laser posterior to the, so all, we always traditionally knew we had to laser the avascular retina, but now there's a concept proposed and published by Anna Els about 10 years ago now. So there are three rules. Firstly, you want to go at about one and a half disc diameter, one and a half times the width of the fibrovascular proliferation. If this is one DD, you want to go up till one and a half DD up till here. Then why have I gone all the way here? And that's because the second rule is you want to go up till the base of the evulsion. If all these blood vessels are evulsed from here, if you go to the base, that's when you will flatten all of this. And third one is you want to be at least three disc diameters away from the center of the fovea. That's easier said than done because some of these weak babies don't even have the fovea developed at the time when you're doing the laser. Now, important thing, cover that up fully. Co laser in between those evulsed vessels, but don't hit the vessels, you can bleed. Uh, and then then when you go back and look at that, it completely heals without any fibrosis. We have now long-term follow-up, we'll publish it shortly. They have very limited myopia and they have excellent vision as early as two and a half to three years corrected age. Um, and uh, yeah, and then finally laser to avoid 4A, either you're buying time because of systemic GA conditions or patients are not agreeing or maybe it's limited disease. So here again, foveal, I'm sorry, posterior laser comes in very handy and here you might want, so this is temporal and nasal, I'm sorry, I've cropped it to show you how both of it happens. So 
the, where the temporal one completely uh, resol resolves, the nasal side may not completely resolve, but may be restricted in terms of exudation and traction, and maybe you will be able to avoid surgery. So the signs of regression, one week later, you must look for pupil dilating uh, and uh, good media, and after two weeks, the ridge completely flattens, and by four weeks, if you have not seen complete response, then please look for areas that you might want to have missed out. Right, and finally, uh, as a summary, cover all avascular regions, even beyond where it is in the ridge. Uh, plan PAR, it's a new concept. All of you who are injecting must have the ability to also do laser because your babies are going to need laser in more difficult scenarios when they are much heavier and much older. And finally, posterior laser. Thank you so much. <laughs>